Today on the Metal Roofing Channel, we talk about metal roofing in the Caribbean islands. What's up guys, I'm Thad Barnett from Sheffield Metals. Welcome to the Metal Roofing Channel and welcome to our first Island Edition Q&A Monday. What's up guys, I got Adam Mazzella, Tom Sutherland with me here today. How you guys doing? Doing great. Yeah. We're sitting on Grand Cayman Island, Seven Mile Beach. It's a pretty nice day outside. Check out in the description, we got quick links for all the questions we're gonna be talking about today. So guys, first, let's talk about um, background of metal roofing in the Cayman Islands. Tell me a little bit about what the standing sea market's like, what metal roofing market's like. Well, I think it primarily started off down here as <clears throat> being a galvaline, galvanized market, uh, steel market, uh, and a lot of corrugated and, and ag product and panels and uh, wasn't real sophisticated. <clears throat> as far as the uh, staying the same market went for years down here. You know, I think uh, pre-Ivan, it was a pretty diverse market in terms of product types. You'd have a lot of asphalt shingles, uh, tile roofs, and then Tom alluded to the metal roof piece, but there wasn't a lot of standardization, uh, following of codes or, or anything like that. And that was 2004 when Hurricane Ivan came yeah. through. Yeah, and then when Hurricane Ivan came through in 2004, uh, you know, I think people, when they came out and cleaned up from the storm, they really saw what, what you know, made it through the storm. Um, and that was standing seam metal roofs. And so as the island kind of developed over the last decade and a half or so since the storm, a lot of what they've put on are engineered metal roof systems, and more specifically, uh, a lot of aluminum uh, standing seam, engineered standing seam metal roof systems. Yeah, talk me through the difference between aluminum and galvalume. Why was that switch made to aluminum? That's uh, primarily because of the cut edge uh, that you get. Um, in a saltwater environment like this, it just wreaks havoc on any kind of uh, steel or galvanized, any kind of raw edges. Um, they had uh, predominantly started with a uh, switch from the Galvalume galvanized product to a 032 aluminum. And as the building codes got more stringent, then most of the product down here is now 040 uh, standing seam. That's when you get off the plane and, and head down the island, it's just phenomenal how much standing seam you see on this island. <clears throat> it's everywhere. And uh, uh, where it's not, it's being knocked down and replaced with standing seam. So. Yeah, and we've been talking to a lot of customers on this trip, um, and they were saying that, you know, in some areas at certain times of the year, you can go up to a roof, put your hand on it, and then, you know, you'll get that salty residue, you know, that comes from that salt spray. Because, yeah, this island's not that big. Um, you know, the salt water is coming up. So, yeah, it's a huge factor in an area like this. Yeah, you, you know, what, a couple of our customers were talking about how much salt is really in the air. I mean, you're here, you know, you're, most people are coming here vaca for vacation. You know, you don't know it or feel it. You just know it's hot. You're going to kick your feet up uh, and enjoy yourself on vacation. But, um, you know, you can really notice the difference between some of these roofs that weren't installed too long ago that were out of galvalume or galvanized. Uh, versus the aluminum roofs that have been installed really since uh, Ivan. So, you know, the aluminum really does make a huge difference uh, in the longevity of the roof systems down here. Now, something else down here too is that uh, the Kynar system holds up so much better in this, in this environment down here. Uh, we have seen some siliconized polyester or some polyester and it, it fades in a hurry. Um, and the sun and the wind and the salt, it just wreaks havoc on the paint system. So, Yeah, talk me through a little bit about performance of standing seam metal roofing. Why is standing seam specifically, why is that type of system, you know, used more often? Yeah, and I, I think this is kind of a continuation of, you know, what we're talking about with using aluminum uh, versus steel on these systems. I mean, that factors into the performance and the longevity of the system. But really, when you're talking performance, uh, you're talking about, island nations that are taking direct hits or near direct hits from uh, large weather events, i.e. hurricanes, tropical storms, things like that, um, on a relatively regular basis. You know, it could happen once or twice a year, 
might not happen for five years. But I think, you know, one of the things that you want to make sure that people don't forget is that your, uh, your roof is what takes care of everything inside your house. So if you've got uh, an engineered standing seam metal roof system, you know, that can hold up to a lot of these huge weather events. And I, I think a lot of the codes are uh, down here are, you know, being able to sustain winds upwards of 150 miles per hour and on up. So, you know, when you look at, you know, performance, it's really driven by, you know, being in this coastal environment, being able to be uh, perform in these salt corrosive environments, as well as the occasional potential huge wind event that you're going to have, or not just wind, but wind and driving rain uh, and debris flying everywhere. So um, that's a that's a huge consideration as well. And I know down down here in the Caymans where we're at, they have uh, have adopted uh, building codes down here that are stringent as Miami-Dade and the Florida coastals. Um, a lot of the islands still do not do that, but... Uh, Cayman Island is, uh, they're doing it right down here. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, and let's talk about components for a second. It seems like in the last decade, especially since af since Ivan, um, a lot of installers have, you know, realized the need for ice and water shield in yeah. their system. Talk me through that. Well, you know, it's it's really just having a, a ice and water shield that it's not, you know, when you think about ice and water shield, you think about cold weather environments and things like that. but really what they're looking for is something that's going to, in essence, seal the deck. That's going to help with um, weatherability, uh, meaning water penetration, water intrusion, more than your typical mechanically attached uh, underlayment. Um, but beyond that, it's also going to help with uplifts because, in essence, it is sealing that deck. And you are minimizing the pressure that could come through that deck in a weather event. So, um, you know, using ice and water shield, uh, through a lot of these metal roofing systems is, is of great importance. Um, other things of importance are, you know, an engineered metal roof system isn't just, you know, oh, I need this metal roof panel. You got to make sure you're using the appropriate components. Uh, specific to this environment, um, you're going to need stainless steel uh, clip screws, stainless steel clips. You're going to want to make sure that you're not creating a lot of unnecessary penetrations and then using the appropriate things to flash them, whether it's uh, gasket head fasteners or rivets, you know, making sure you're using the appropriate things that aren't going to fail um, as a byproduct of being in this environment. Exactly. You need that complete system. Yes, yep. exactly. Tom, talk to me about roll forming. What do people use on the island? Do they use portable roll formers? Do they get panels shipped in? And what? why do they do it? Well, it's a whole lot more economical to ship coils down to the islands than it is form panels. Um, when you're shipping form panels, you're shipping a lot of air and a lot of bulk, and it's very costly to uh, bring that type product in. You can bring in a coil and it takes up very little space on a container uh, where you can combine all your your all your accessories and underlayment and everything in one container rather than having multiple containers shipped down for your your uh, for all of your metal needs yeah. for all of your yeah and you know Tom Tom really hit the nail on the head but a lot of times when you're shipping from the United States it's all about volume or density of that volume so if you're shipping coil uh, we can still support you by shipping that coil, uh, contractor, uh, manufacturer, controlling that manufacturing on the island, meaning we can give you access to the engineering and support you on that side while still making it more efficient, you know, in, in your environment and in the islands. And you don't have to worry about damaging a panel and having to wait eight weeks to get yeah. a replacement panel from point. the States. Yep. The islands moved towards aluminum. Talk to me about the thickness of aluminum. Where was it and where is it going now? Yeah, so, you know, this also kind of to, you know, pile on the performance piece, you know, certainly the thicker the metal, the, the higher it's going to perform or the better the panel's going to perform in an uplift test. Um, you know, so where when the island was kind of recovering out of Ivan, uh, you know, first they started with 032 aluminum and now they're trending more towards 040 aluminum. Okay. You are going to get better uplifts, higher uplifts using that. It's gonna be more rigid, it's gonna perform a little bit better. Um, and we have aluminum engineering in 032 and 040. So if you have a product that, for instance, um, we have tested in 032, 
using 040, the engineering would still be applicable because it goes up. Now, if you have something tested in 040, you can't go down so uh, in thickness. So just keep, keep that in mind. Um, you can always use a thicker metal, but you can't go thinner on the metal okay. when, you're, when it comes to the engineering. Right. And I want to give big props to the installers here on Grand Cayman. You know, you were saying earlier that we're really seeing the right things. Um, they're doing all things right with standing seam, using aluminum, high quality paint system. Tell me a little bit about that and the quality of installation down here. Absolutely gorgeous. Uh, typically, when you're riding around, you will see roofs that have installation issues or you know it looks like it might be thrown together by somebody that didn't know exactly what they were doing or didn't care and every roof on this island that i've seen is just it looked perfect yeah so, i agree great. and there's so much standing seam that you know that volume with the you know incredible installation all the way around big props to the grand cayman installers yeah and and they did a great job i mean we were talking the same language hey what are you doing with your z's are you doing anything like starter cleat are you doing any cz's things like that and he kind of said no those details don't really perform in these high wind areas so you know usually you'll start to see people using you know details because they don't have cold weather they don't have ice and water and all that fun stuff and they feel like they can cheat a little bit these guys are still using our you know details by the book yeah. standard uh you know metal roof installation methods that you know are endorsed by us and a number of our comp uh, competitors exactly and if you ever get a chance to get down to the cayman islands come check it out there's some incredible sights to see down here well thanks so much for joining me today guys on this island edition we're gonna kick our feet up here but comment below if you have any questions subscribe to the metal roofing channel anything else check us out at sheffieldmetals.com we'll catch you next time